providing a briefing on the current rest comprehensive plan um, amendment, which is currently underway. So we're going to provide um, some progress or discussion on the study, the progress of the study to date. Um, we will give an overview of the pros, um, rest of the comprehensive plan text, um, highlighting the key changes and, and recommendations. And then we'll kind of discuss the next steps. And then we will allow time for any questions um, regarding the current study. Um, so before we get into the agenda, I just wanted to note um, that in attendance um, in this meeting, we have some of the county staff that have been involved in this process and have worked with the um, task force. We have several task force members um, who were, you know, worked on drafting up the proposed language. Um, and I'll ask them, they, they can kind of do raise the virtual hands because I can't see the full list of um, guests right now. And uh, we also have Supervisor um, Walter Alcorn, um, you know, District Supervisor for the Hunter Mill District. So um, this is just to kind of show the agenda again. Welcome introductions. We'll give you um, the presentation and then we'll allow time for the um, question and answer period. So before we jump into the presentation, I just wanted to see uh, Supervisor Alcorn. Did you have any words that you wanted to share? Yeah, I just uh, want to thank you, uh, St. Clair and Sarah and the uh, DPD team uh, for pulling this together. Also wanted to uh, give a shout out to uh, the task force uh, that worked on uh, through 58 at least uh, full meetings and a whole bunch of other meetings on the side um, to pull this uh, proposal together. Uh, in particular, the um, uh, economic development chapter, which would be a new chapter for an area plan like Reston's and Fairfax County's comprehensive plan. Uh, when I give a shout out to Charles Kapoor and uh, to Gary Maupin on the task force who both uh, uh, pulled that together, uh, I believe we're the leads uh, on that. And uh, thank you uh, particularly to them uh, for, uh, uh, for that. And also, I just want to point out, I know uh, the topic here, it's economic development. Also, I believe social development was uh, added to at least some of the uh, uh, outre outreach materials about uh, this meeting tonight. And I do look forward uh, to hearing some uh, great feedback, similar to what we heard last night. I thought it was a very good, very lively discussion. Um, and really, it underscored why we're doing this. You know, this is, uh, this is so important to get uh, responses, get feedback input from folks in the broader community. And I know some of the responses uh, we heard last night had to do with uh, making sure we get the word out. We are doubling down on that and looking for more ways uh, to uh, make sure people know about this, uh, get a chance to digest it. Uh, so as you have more suggestions on that or ideas, just let us know because we're gonna be doing a lot of these uh, in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, before we get into the public hearing process. So again, thank you all and uh, look forward to uh, hearing a good discussion again tonight. Thank you very much, Supervisor Alcorn. Um, and now before we get into the presentation, um, Sarah Garfield is gonna give some kind of instructions for folks on how you can um, you know, ask your questions. Sarah. Sure, so um, as St. Clair mentioned with the agenda, there will be a more formal Q and A at the end of the presentation. Um, but if you have any questions or comments that you would like to provide um, as he goes through the presentation, feel free to throw those into the chat and um, any of our staff, task force members, people who can help answer the questions. If you want to go ahead and take a, take a stab at answering um, those or responding to those in the chat um, during the presentation, um, Please, please do so. And then at the end of the presentation, when we um, kick off the Q and A, I'll be checking to make sure we have um, responses to any of the questions um, and comments that have haven't been answered. We'll go through those. Um, so we do recommend the chat function. And I will just go through um, two other options. If you are on your phone, you'll want to uh, press star three to raise your hand. And then I'll call your name and unmute you, um, and you'll be able to um, to speak at that time. And then if you would like to rate, if you would like to um, speak, um, you know, through the um, 
platform, just ra raise your hand with the uh, icon that you see here on the slide. Um, and I'll, I'll unmute you and you can speak at that time too. If you are on a condi like condensed view on your phone um, or your, your window isn't maximized, you may need to click the little three dots icon for, to find the, um, the, the hand to raise your hand. Um, so, and then when you're done, if you can um, lower your hand by clicking the icon again, then we will be all set. But um, then the last thing is that um, I will throw the link to our study webpage in the chat right now. Just want to flag that if you have any um, additional comments after tonight, anything you want to formally submit, we would really appreciate you um, taking a look at the study webpage where we have a link to our form and filling out any feedback through that form. Um, and then the draft text that St. Clair is going to talk about in just a minute. Um, the full text of that is on our study webpage as well. So I'll put that in the chat now. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, so moving on into the presentation. So the 2020 rest and study was authorized to evaluate how new development might impact rest and residents, public facilities, and provide an opportunity to address growth related issues within Reston. With over 30 rezonings approved since the Reston comprehensive plan was last updated in 2015, Many in the community expressed concerns about how new development might affect existing residents, um, impact public facilities, and the quality of new development design. The study provides the opportunity to address these and other growth related issues. So just to give a little background on the comprehensive plan itself, the comprehensive plan is the primary resource of county staff, the board of supervisors, the planning commission, and other decision makers for evaluating land use applications and making policy decisions about the county's built and natural environment. The comprehensive plan describes a community's land use vision, priorities, and goals. And ideally, it represents the full spectrum of the community, young and old, renters and homeowners, minority communities, and all income ranges. The comprehensive plan sets forth areas of the county that are recommended for more developments or where um, recommended to retain their existing uses and character or changes in land use. And the plan includes land use recommendations such as residential, retail, office, and mixed use. Um, it addresses the amount of development and the character of development and includes design details such as building height, open space networks, and street networks. So for this study, uh, the Resident Task Force was comprised. It was a 31 member community task force um, appointed by Supervisor Alcorn back in March of 2020. Now, the task force meetings were originally scheduled to kick off in March of 2020, but due to the impacts of COVID the COVID-19 pandemic, we had to scramble to find an alternative, alternative format for hosting the task force meetings. As a result, the task force meetings began in May of 2020. And as Supervisor Alcorn mentioned, all of the full task force Full task force meetings and subcommittee, subcommittee meetings were hosted on a virtual platform, um, the same WebEx platform that we're using tonight. The task force was comprised of residents representing neighborhood and community organizations, uh, landowners, and representatives from business associations. Um, the task force worked with task force and county staff worked closely to discuss and analyze potential changes to the comprehensive plan for Reston, um, which guides future planning and land use divisions for the area. The full task force held 58 public meetings between May 2020 and August of 2022. Uh, the task force formed subcommittees to review, update, and draft proposed recommendations or text for the comprehensive plan. And county staff from multiple agencies collaborated with the task force to develop to further develop text for the comprehensive plan. Any differences between task force and staff recommendations will be highlighted in the staff report. So during the task force process, um, the task force worked on drafting proposed um, text and the proposed text includes revised language for the current plan elements in the adopted rest of, rest of the plan, um, or we say the existing chapters in the plan, um, which are listed um, on the slide currently showing. And they also proposed new text or new plan language for three new plan elements or three new chapters of the rest of the plan. And those are community health, equity, and economic development. And we'll now provide an overview and highlights of, of all these chapters and the changes. 
So the first uh, chapter or topic area was the planning principles. Um, when the planned community of Reston was founded by Robert E. Simon in 1964, he established seven guiding principles for the development of Reston. Over time, the guiding principles were increased to 10. And the proposed update includes two new principles to address community health and equity in Reston. The planning principle updated to ensure the principles will continue to guide Reston development and result in development developments that are harmonious with the surrounding neighborhoods. Moving on to land use. Uh, the task force reviewed and proposed, excuse me, the task force review and proposed amendments are intended to extend the legacy of outstanding new town planning in Reston and to ensure that the development potential for Reston, the infrastructure and environment are all in balance. Uh, the changes proposed in the land use recommendations focus on um, four different areas in Reston. Um, the first is the village centers. With regards to the village centers, the land use recommendations um, for the village centers, specifically Hunter Woods, South Lakes, and North Point, were reviewed to consider whether future development proposals might require a comprehensive plan amendment. And after the review, the task force recommendations um, state that for the village centers, the existing residential located adjacent to non-resident non non-residential areas will remain unchanged. And for proposals for new housing in the non-residential non areas of the Villa Centers, they will require an amendment to the rest of the comprehensive plan before consideration. Another area that was looked at was the Town Center North non-TOD district, which is jointly owned by Fairfax County and Innova, and is generally bordered by Baron Cameron Avenue to the north, Bowman Town Drive to the south, Town Center Parkway to the west, and Fountain Drive to the east. For this area, the recommend the proposed language assigns all residential development to blocks two, four, and six, uh, which are the blocks that are owned by Innova. The plan also recommends a maximum of 1,000 dwelling units and 150,000 square feet of non-residential non development for blocks two, four, and six. And for blocks one, three, five, seven, eight, and nine, which are the county owned blocks, these areas are reserved for civic uses with adequate ancillary retail. Another area looked at was the eastern section between the TOD and proposed extension of South Lake Drive and the north of the Dulles Toll Road section. Um, this area is south of Sunset Hills Road, north of the Western Station Boulevard, and east of the Michael Faraday Court. For this area, the plan, um, the proposed text. Um, adds a development option to permit residential residential development up to 1.0 FAR. And for the Rolling Clark Place residential mixed use section, um, which is located along Rolling Clark Place south of the Dulles Airport Access Road and north of Sunside, Sunrise Valley Drive, um, the proposed plan language would allow the provision of public uses to satisfy the required 25% non-residential uses um, required on the two parcels located south of the Dulles Airport Access Road, which are currently planned for residential mixed use development with a total of 75% residential and 25% non-residential. For the transportation chapter, the proposed recommendations focus on expanding the vision for a multimodal transportation system that provides safe, efficient, attractive, and dependable travel options in an equitable way for all current and future residents, employees, and visitors of Reston. It also includes updating the active transportation and airwide public transportation guidance, adding placemaking guidance, and modifying the local street network in the TSA area or the transit station areas. Transportation recommend recommendations also uh, propose uh, the addition of eight planning principles, which include to balance future land use with supporting transportation inf infrastructure and services, provide a complete street network that accommodates all modes of transportation for all users, and promote the safety, health, and wellness of community members. Moving on to the housing chapter, uh, the proposed text for housing um, introduces language that encourages the preservation of existing market and committed affordable affordable housing units across the whole of Reston. 
encourages the expansion of housing options for vulnerable populations in areas within walking distance of transit and supporting services, encourages, and encourages the development of senior housing in areas within walking distance of transit and provide a continuum of care to allow seniors to age in place. Also, as part of the recent housing review, the task force ended by three follow on actions to further the housing goals um, in Reston. The following motions include studying the implications of lowering the current average medium income categories for for sale workforce dwelling units, developing a formal proposal to create a community land trust pilot program in Reston to study the effectiveness and long term financial implications of such a program to increase the number of affordable housing units and studying the control periods for workforce dwelling units to determine if the control periods for rent and for sale units can be extended. Um, looking at the key change proposed in for the housing recommendations um, on this slide here, um, you see a table that shows the average median income or AMI targets for rental workforce dwelling units um, countywide within the rest of TSAs and in the, the rest of non TSA areas. The draft language includes an update to the average median income targets for rental workforce dwelling units um, to recommend that 6% of the total units are targeted to the 71 to 80% AMI, 3% of the total units are targeted to the 61 to 70% AMI, and 3% of the total units are targeted to the up to 60% AMI for a total of 12% rental um, workforce dwelling units. The current countywide policy is 4% for the 71 to 80% AMI, 2% to the 61 to 70% AMI, and 2% for the up to 60 AMI. So what's proposed for the, the rest of TSAs is a change from the countywide policy. The proposed recommendations for the rest of non-TSAs are consistent with the current countywide policy. Moving on to parks and open space. The proposed updates to the park and open space recommendations seek to advance um, the following goals. Preserving the natural features, including forests, lakes, and stream valleys, providing consistent quality and quantity of parks, um, recreation and open space for all residents and employees in Reston, regardless of age, race, and income levels, and plan for a variety of recreation experiences to serve all ages, backgrounds, interests, and abilities to meet the needs of the culturally and economically diverse Reston community. Um, furthermore, they intend to provide for indoor and outdoor cultural activities, provide for community gathering spaces, and establish inclusive and equitable community engagement to inform and guide planning for parks, recreation, and open spaces. Um, a couple key changes to the parks and recommendations chapter is the proposed language removes references to parks previously referenced in the Reston plan, um, specifically Lake Fairfax, Stratton Woods, and Fred Crabtree, because they are outside of the Reston boundary. Um, it also revises the athletic field guidance for Reston to recommend that based on the population needs as determined by the Fairfax County Park Authority, at least 12 full athletic fields should be provided, including one in or nearby each of the three transit station areas through development um, contributions of primarily land, new facilities, and improvements to increase the capacity at existing facilities, and secondary, secondarily funds. Moving on to environmental stewardship. Um, the proposed recommendations specify an environmentally related vision and planning principles expected to guide development in Reston. Um, the, the proposed language also introduces the concept of biophilia, and the certification of Reston as a biophilic community and offers insight into various environmental issues germane to um, the community, describes the challenges facing the community and offers specific recommendations to address Reston's challenges. Um, the environmental stewardship recommendations um, address the following topics, um, community, de community design, including ecosystem health and resiliency, Sustainable landscapes um, with regards to soils, vegetation, and invasive plant species, watersheds, um, water resources, including wetlands, streams and buffer areas, and lakes and ponds, also stormwater management and salt management, and sustainability, um, including green buildings and green neighborhoods, noise, lighting, electrical vehicle charging, and bird-friendly design. 
Moving on to the heritage resources recommendations. Um, language was added regarding the reconnaissance level architectural survey that was conducted by the Virginia Department of Historic Resources in 2019. Uh, this survey included buildings constructed between 1961 and 1978, which were the prime development years for Reston. In addition, a map was added in the text identifying the locations of previous uh, survey efforts. Language was also added regarding the recognition of the Association Drive campus as a heritage resource. Um, this campus is significant in community planning and development as part of Robert Simon's original plan for Reston. And given the importance of this office complex, the draft plan recommends consideration of preservation and or ad adaptive reuse with any potential development proposal. And finally, the inventory of historic sites map was updated to include the United States Geological Survey building now listed on the National Register of Historic Places. With regards to public facilities, um, language was added to ensure that the current and planned public facilities will adhere to the principles identified in the comprehensive plan, including public participation in decision making, addressing the housing needs of all ages and incomes, ensuring environmental sustainability, and using green technology in facilities. The public facilities addressed in the plan were also expanded to include law enforcement, libraries, health and human services, housing and facilities for homeless population, public recreation and, and entertainment facilities, water and sewer, and solid waste and recycling. Now, moving on to the public art recommendations. The public art recommendations were updated to ensure that developers coordinate with coordinate public art projects with public art rested early in the design process and that public art is successfully integrated into development proposals and ensure there is transparency in the public art rested review process. As was mentioned, there were a couple of uh, chapters or topic areas that are new um, for the rest of the plan and the community health chapter is one of those chapters. Um, the pros community health recommendations aim to ensure that planning and development rest and prioritizes achieving health equity. And the objectives for the community health section of the plan are intended to benefit the health of everyone in rest and regardless of race, income, age, immigration status, or any other measure. The community health objectives are provided in five interrelated subcategories, including healthcare and services, active living, food systems, climate health, green infrastructure, and healthy buildings, and social cohesion. Another new chapter is the equity chapter. Uh, this chapter builds on the concepts outlined in the one Fairfax social and racial equity policy, which was adopted by the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors in November of 2017. This policy commits the Board of Supervisors to consider equity in decision-making and in the development and delivery of future policies, programs, and services. The proposed equity recommendations are intended to continue residents' longstanding commitment to removing barriers that perpetuate injustice in our society and unite residents around a shared set of goals for its future and to use planning to build a more inclusive economy and connect people to opportunity. And last but not least is the economic development chapter, which is again a new chapter to the rest of the comprehensive plan. This chapter is consistent with the Fairfax County uh, policy plan for economic development. And the recommendations are included in um, two subcategories. The first sub subcategory are identified um, as the recommendations necessary to support land use decisions. And again, they are grouped together in the recommendations one section. And the second set of recommendations are identified as aspirational and apply to other Fairfax County organizations. Um, and these aspirational recommendations would not be required to be addressed as part of individual land use decisions. So that covers kind of the chapters that are included in the proposed text. Um, just kind of discussing the, the next steps. Again, at this point, we are in the community engagement process. Um, this is meeting number two, um, and we have meetings scheduled um, through October. Um, and the public comment period, um, Sarah Godfrey mentioned earlier that on the study um, website, there is a link to a um, where you know you can provide online comments. That comment will, window will be open through October 28th. 
Uh, based on the current schedule, the staff report would be published late September, and the tentative public hearing dates are scheduled for um, Planning Commission on November 2nd and Board of Supervisors December 6th. So just wanted to point out again, we do have here on this current slide the um, web address for the rest and study um, uh, website. Um, there's a lot of information on that page. Um, we would ask you to take a look and review. You could even see information on the task force meetings. Again, the draft language is, is available there as well as the link to provide comments. Um, so again, we, we, we encourage everybody to um, go to the page and provide feedback. We really want to get feedback. So at this time, I think we'll open it up for um, the question and answer period. So again, if anybody has any questions, I think Sarah provided kind of guidance on how you can pose your questions. Um, we will move on to the question and answer period now. Thank you. Thanks, St. Clair. Doesn't look like we have any questions just yet. I'm checking to see if hands are raised. Uh, let's see, Gray Wells, it looks like you have your hand raised. I'm going to unmute you and you are un unmuted. Okay, thank you. you going. Um, I don't know if this is the appropriate time for my comment or is it, is this just questions? I think if you questions, if, if you have a comment, I mean, you, you can provide the comment now. Yes. Okay. I have a comment about, um. I guess something specific that wasn't brought up today. I missed yesterday's meeting, which was on transportation. Um, and that's what my comment is about. Um, I understand that there's proposal to put into the comprehensive plan a cut through or connecting American Dreamway with North Shore Drive. And I just want to say how strongly I oppose that idea. Um, I think it's a very dangerous. Um, if, if that happened, that's a very dangerous cut through road. Um, North Shore Drive, I'm assuming you all have driven on North Shore Drive. I live over in Charter Oak Cluster. Um, we'll just start with that. Um, right about where that road would come through. Um, the townhouses along North Shore Drive in that area, in that area, probably further, were built in the 1960s, 1970s. There's not enough parking in our clusters for, you know, back then it was one car households. Um, now we have two, three, four, five cars per household. Um, and so there's not enough parking. So people park on North Shore Drive. If you drive on North Shore, you'll see all the cars that are out there. It's already sort of dicey and dangerous getting in and out of your car. If we increase the amount of cars traveling on North Shore in that area, that's just going to make it that much more dangerous for the people parking along there. Um, North Shore, where uh, where American Dreamway would would join, um, it's a curve, um, which adds a whole nother level of of danger, potential danger. Um, there are people who walk their children along and cross North Shore Drive. There are people who walk their dogs and cross North Shore Drive. There are just there are people who bike along North Shore Drive. I think if we add that intersection and add the amount of traffic that would happen because people are always looking to avoid traffic lights and you could avoid several um, depending on where you're going on North Shore if you put that cut through. I just think we are asking for some um, very dangerous, um, life-threatening type of traffic. And so I just wanted to voice that I, I strongly, strongly oppose, and I think would love to see us not even list that in there as a potential for the future. I think that's it. Thank you. 
Well, thank you very much uh, for your feedback. We appreciate that. Um, again, so yes, this is again the opportunity to tell me we want to get all the comments. We want to hear all the feedback from the community. Um, yes, to, to look at what changes may need to be um, made, or you know, before, before anything go goes to the to the public hearing process. So thank you very much for that. Um, we definitely will have your comment on record. But I would say again, feel free to also go to the website. You know, put your comments in there as well. Um, but thank you very much. St. Clair. Yes. Supervisor Alcorn, just to, uh, I, I just want to say, uh, I heard you, I, agree. I heard last night as well, you know, when a, not a plan amendment proposal, but a rezoning proposal came to the Board of Supervisors just uh, last month, um, it did not include this connection. So uh, I am definitely taking note uh, uh, because this ultimately will come to the board. Um, I also wanted to just, uh, uh, and, and thank you for that comment, but I also just wanted to recognize, I see on the screen, uh, Gary Maupin uh, is there. Uh, Gary, I know you did a lot of the writing um, of this uh, proposed economic development chapter. Uh, you and Charles, I know, worked on that. Um, Gary, I just wanted to see if there was anything you wanted to stay, say before uh, we accepted other comments from members of the public tonight. And, and and you're muted. Yep. Well, maybe Charles, what do you have anything you would want to say while <laughs> while the mute button is been on? And before that, I, I just also wanted to point out that uh, Mr. Mike Jennings, who's on the task force, he was also part yes, of the Mike, group of that course. Thank you. So, so thank you, Mike, too. Sure. Uh, well, well, thank you, Supervisor Alcorn, and I'll just say it was a pleasure to collaborate with Gary on this chapter. I think it's uh, very exciting to see Reston as a community being as progressive as they are in creating an economic development chapter and uh, really excited to be able to put forth, uh, as, as St. Clair outlined, recommendations that are both practical right now in terms of land use and also aspirational and having us look towards the future of how we can create a, a really diverse, robust, uh, economic ecosystem here in Reston. So I uh, hope everyone enjoys what they read in, in those pages and in those recommendations. And um, uh, Gary definitely deserves the uh, the credit for, for this one. He definitely took on the lion's share of the work in putting this together. I think they still might be working on the audio um, over there. Um, I guess, Sarah, are there any more questions that we're seeing? Um, yes, let me see. Uh, Greg Ackerman, your hand is raised. And I've just unmuted you. So Gregory Ackerman, you can speak. Uh, thank you and, and um, thank you, St. Clair, for the presentation. and. Supervisor Alcorn and, and everyone else who worked on this plan. Um, it's a really great plan. I'm Greg Ackerman. I'm I'm with the um, the local building trades unions. Uh, so we represent uh, workers who work in the construction industry, including um, many uh, projects in Reston. Um, and we're obviously very excited about um, you know a lot of the uh, proposed uh, uh, social developments here. Um, I did want to mention, you know, obviously uh, any kind of key conversation around equity um, should involve, um, you know, equal conversations about wages and, and benefits um, and that obviously the planning of the community is so important to how, um, you know, workers are, are able to, to live and thrive. Uh, but without family sustaining wages, um, you know, oftentimes workers not only are, are not able to afford to, to be able to live in Reston, but, um, you know, workers in the construction industry who get paid um, substandard wages can, um, you know, increase the need for social services and, and, and uh, you know, increase the need for um, other services like affordable housing. And so, um, you know, we see a lot of construction going on in the region. Um, we also see a lot of conversation about uh, the need for better trained workers. And so I think a lot of uh, uh, synergy can happen with this comprehensive plan if uh, language around fair wages and benefits, as well as good high quality training opportunities, including apprenticeships um, could could be included. Um, this would be a, a great consideration for 
uh, the equity portion. And certainly as, as developers ask for more density, um, you know, there should be a consideration for uh, whether or not the, um, you know, the, the construction jobs that are being created are, are included, uh, including family sustaining wages, uh, benefits and, and, you know, high quality training uh, opportunities. Um, I would, you know, end by just saying that, you know, Reston's founding principles really center, uh, center the individual and, and, and uh, you know, the, the, the jobs that a lot of the, the, you know, the upcoming development are, are going to create can either be really, really good jobs that can uh, be life changing for people. Um, and, uh, and they can work on safe job sites with good wages and benefits. Um, and sustain a family, um, or they can, you know, they can include jobs that uh, where workers are paid under the table with no benefits and um, have to worry about not getting workers comp if they fall off a ladder. And so, um, you know, I think this is a kind of a really make or break moment for Reston, and we really hope that the comprehensive plan reflects um, a lot of uh, a lot of these priorities around particularly wages, benefits, and and training opportunities. So, thank you. In the comments. Thank you very much, Mr. Ackerman. Appreciate the feedback. Um, Mr. Maupin, are you able, able to speak now? No, oh, we're still not hearing him. I'm going to try muting and unmuting them. Let's see if this works. Can you all speak now? No. Hmm. I wonder if they've call in maybe oh, wait. Sarah were you, were you able to hear me before this is Charles yes. Kapoor okay yes we heard we heard you okay yes. I, I was just worried if I was just speaking into a void <laughs> no, no, we, we, no we no, heard you, we heard you loud and clear <laughs> yeah, they should be able to oh yeah we can hear you oh, now. there we go now we can oh. hear you Lisa uh, okay. can, can you hear me yes yes oh. yes <laughs> well we're here at the government center um and uh they did a great job of, of uh, taking care of this, but I, I think um, the economic development chapter is a new chapter. I'll just point out that uh, it, before we sent this officially to the county, although they participated with us before, that this chapter um, got a, a unanimous vote by the task force. When we worked with the, with the uh, county in more detail after it was submitted, Officially, uh, Chris Caperton, who's on leave to, tonight, uh, and, and work with us, and uh, we made a, a few changes, um, uh, but it, it came back for another vote and was a um, unanimous vote again. So we worked very hard. It includes things like um, equity has a heavy emphasis on those kind of things. Uh, some of the the things that were just talked about. So we're trying to make Reston really work economically um, and uh, socially as we even work through this chapter. So um, thank you for people participating and, and Charles Kapoor for all he did on this and, and others. John Carter sitting here that helped on this and other task force members and the support of Supervisor Alcorn. So thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Maupin. Um, Sarah, are there any more questions? Uh, I see Dave Sittler, your hand is raised. I will unmute. Let's see, okay, Dave, you are unmuted. Thanks. Uh, this is a procedural question. Sinclair, is this gonna be the same presentation for all of the uh, coming outreach events? Star six. Star so. Yes, it's going to be the same presentation. It's just that the different uh, meetings are focused on different topics. So again, those who are attending and kind of the questions that may come up might be focused on specific topics. But as far as the presentation, yes, it will be the same presentation. Thank you. Okay, and it looks like uh, Gregory Ackerman, your hand is still raised. I don't know. I'll unmute you just to check and see. Oh wait, you 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 lowered your hand, so that answers that question. Um, just double check the chat real quick. Yeah, we do not have any questions or comments in the chat at this time. Okay.
Okay, well, I'll just again, just, we'll just say again, you know, for folks, you may, if, even if you don't have a question now, if you, you know, you think of a question, you know, following the meeting or you, you have comments, again, please go to the rest of the study website, use the link to provide, you know, comments. Um, and, uh, you know, again, we, we really want to get feedback um, during this public engagement process. So that, that, that's really our goal to get as much feedback as we can. Um, with that, I guess, um, Supervisor Alcorn, do you have any additional words, comments? Uh, no, I, I, I just, I know we have, uh, still have, we've had a few folks speak tonight. Want to thank them uh, for their comments. Uh, Gary, thank you again for all you did on the economic development chapter from the task force. And um, if folks have additional thoughts, uh, as St. Clair mentioned, please do provide those in writing. Uh, and there you go. Uh, follow up questions can be sent uh, there. Sarah just put that uh, in the chat. So encourage folks to do that. Spread the word. Uh, you know, this is the second of uh, at least, I believe, six or seven of these uh, meetings that we'll be doing. And, um, and I know it's a lot to digest, uh, but if folks uh, do have uh, other things that they want to uh, suggest, uh, you are more than welcome to do so. We look forward to that. Um, so thank you again to DPD staff, St. Clair, you and Sarah and the others. Uh, and uh, uh, really appreciate the, the great job hosting this. And, um, and Lisa, thank you for working out those audio technical difficulties there at the government center. Thank you, Supervisor Alcorn. Um, just wanted to know for folks, um, you know, for the public engagement, we're doing combination of the virtual and in-person meetings. So this is meeting number two. The first two meetings have been virtual meetings, um, but next week we will be having an in-person meeting um, uh, next week, September 22nd um, at 7 p.m. And that meeting will be at the uh, Kathy Hudgens Community Center at Southgate. Um, so again, that one will be in person. Um, I know, again, we're working on distributing information um, and hopefully we can get more um, folks in attendance um, at that meeting. So again, anybody who's here, please spread the word. We want to, you know, we want to make sure everybody is aware of this process and has the opportunity to participate. So thank you very much. Um, I guess with that, I mean, um, I guess we can just ask again, anybody have any questions? I do not see any anything no else in the chat or any other hands raised. Okay. Um, I just raised my hand. This is Lynn. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Lynn. <laughs> I'm focused on the since, attendees. <laughs> since we have time, <laughs> I was just wondering, uh, St. Clair, you were encouraging folks to um, send comments in through the portal. I'm just wondering at the end of this process, if all of those comments will be aggregated in a report that will be available to the community. Sarah, could you, can you provide feedback on that? Uh, yes, yes, we are. We're, we're building a matrix, so to speak. <laughs> um, okay. So, so yeah, we do prefer the comments to be sent that way, but if, if people need to send them another way, um, Okay, we can, we can add them to the list. Um, but, but yeah, though, there will be a um, report of all the public comments we receive. And I, I think, and I think the key is that by using the portal. That gives us the opportunity to um, be able to kind of do the matrix. So, again, right, we encourage I understand. people to, to, to use the portal, like, we'll take them anyway, but the portal is really the best, the best way to go. Yeah, you know, I, th I think that that it's wonderful that you all are going to be sharing that because, you know, as you know, civic organizations get on board with what's happening with the comprehensive plan. It's important to be able to uh, reflect and and see what those public comments are. And, you know, it has far reaching uh, effects. It's not just the comprehensive plan. It's how civic organizations that serve Restonians. Uh, look at things as well. So that's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I know, I know there's some of the rest of the folks that are, you know, they're gearing up. There's, there's another meeting going on tonight. So I guess this kind of works out for, for them. Um, 
but I guess if there are no additional questions, um, I, I think that that covers everything we wanted to cover for tonight. So again, we'll just remind everybody again, please utilize the portal, provide comments. Again, like I said, the next meeting is September 22nd at the Kathy Hudgens uh, Community Center at Southgate, 7 p.m. And again, um, Sarah has provided a link if you have any follow-up questions and we'll, we'll, we'll you know, we will provide you um, with the feedback. So thanks everybody for your time. Thanks for your participation and um, on to the next meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.